What's happening, guys? Dr. Michael Mola here. Today, I want to be breaking down Clomid, aka Clomiphene Citrate, talking about my experience with it. And uh, as always, if you're new here, hit the subscribe. We talk about cool stuff like this all the time. Uh, if you like the content, you can help me out by giving it a like. So let's get started. All right, clomiphene citrate for hormone replacement therapy. We're going to talk about the benefits, dosing, side effects in men. Uh, overview slide. I'm going to give you kind of my experience with it, uh, why it's indicated, contraindicated, how it works dose side effects and why we see that a lot i believe steve cook did a big video about how he took clomid monotherapy and it didn't make him feel good i've seen that my me myself personally didn't feel that great on it but um let's break that down so when i first heard about clomid when i was in school i'm like this is the holy grail of hormone replacement therapy right because when we do exogenous testosterone like a testosterone sipinate we shut down the the hypo gonadal axis, the hypothalamus gonads in the brain, we mess that up. We give the body too much testosterone and it shuts down its own production. That comes with a wide variety of side effects. Uh, Clomid is a selective estrogen, uh, estrogen receptor modulator. So it basically tells the body it's lacking it. There are down and up regulates receptors at different parts of the body, specifically in the brain. And then the body starts to produce more. So I was like, man, this stuff's great. Uh, so I've been pretty transparent about my, my testosterone journey. I, my T was in the low 400s when I was in my early 20s. Uh, who knows why? That's a whole other conversation. You can go and watch my PowerPoint on testosterone. Uh, but when I got out of school, I kind of waited as long as I could to kind of stay natural. And uh, in my late, like 28, I tried Clomid. And I felt, I felt great. Like I, for the first like handful of them I did. I was like, man, this stuff's awesome. I was in the gym. I was feeling better, energy, libido, all that, everything that I would expected from increasing my testosterone. Then I'd say about two to three weeks in, I started feeling weird, started feeling a little anxious. Uh, I'd actually get like kind of shivers and I'd get cold in my hands. Um, super insecure, super like, what am I doing with my life? I wanted to take like bubble baths, like, sorry for being a little too much, but I, I honestly imagine it's probably what it feels like for a woman to be on her period. I was just, just and I was irritated really easy. And, and, um, and I think that has to deal with how it's working with, with the, with estrogen. So, uh, I have used this on myself and I've used this in a lot of guys and some guys it's fine, but, uh, let's break down, you know, kind of, kind of what's probably going on here. So when is it used first? It's, you know, it's, it's first used in women with fertility and, uh, then it actually started being used in guys with fertility. I know more than a handful of even patients that I've worked with who have used, uh, Clomid to help with, uh, help them conceive. And I, I see it boost. Like my total testosterone went up to 1100, 1200 on, um, Clomid. I see that a lot of guys, guys will come in at two as low as three to 400 and it will go to over a thousand, their total testosterone. Uh, the free tendency, not as the free still goes up if your total goes up, but the, because the sex hormone binding globulin goes up, it, um, it's not as proportionate as doing like exogenous, but you still get your free T at plenty high over 15, 20 milligrams per deciliter. Um, it's also used in gynecomastia, which is interesting because if you think about its mechanism of action, it should be increasing estrogen, but because it's a receptor modulator, that's how it's working on different parts of the body, uh, different uh, tissues differently. And so we'll talk about that in a little bit. And then I, I also learned about these headaches as I was doing research in here, neuraldriform headaches. I had no idea, no idea. I haven't really used it for that. Uh, why would it be contraindicated? Uh, you, you kind of just use your, your brain, you know, anytime you have a pituitary tumor, like we're, we're up regulating the, uh, the performance of the pituitary liver disease, you're popping out more hormones. It's harder for your liver to clear them out thyroid. And again, this is more on, kind of on the women's side, women's cycle is it's quite a bit more complicated than guys. And they, their, their harmony, their orchestra of hormones are a little more delicate than guys, but Obviously, guys can still get kind of kind of wonky from from playing with anything that messes with your hormones. So let's talk about the pharmacology. Am I blocking? Okay, yeah. There's the hypothalamus. I don't know if this moves me. We'll figure it out. Um, but if you can, this this right here, if my face is in front of it, this is your hypothalamus, right? It releases gonadotropin-releasing hormone. It goes down as a guy it goes down to your to your testes, 
and then you release testosterone and that goes back up to your brain and hopefully you have a, a good feedback, right? Your brain says, I want a thousand testosterone. Um, the message goes down your testes, your testes produce a thousand testosterone. We're all good now, right? Like if you, let's say that you ask for a thousand and you get back 500, well, then your, your brain's going to be like, well, I'm 500 short. I need that. I need a thousand that I was supposed to get. So now I'm going to ask for 1500, right? Or if you get too much, your brain will ask for less. And there's this feedback, right? So the way that uh, the Clomid works is it's a receptor modulator in the brain, in the hypothalamus. And it, it has two different isomers to it. And I think this is super, super important for people to understand. 38% of the drug is what's called zooclomiphene. It has a half-life of about 30 days. Okay, so that means it's going to be in your system for 260. Like one pill can be in your system for up to two. One part of that isomer can be in your system for 261 days. And it works more on the FSH system and helping your body produce more estrogen. On the other end, 62% of Clomid is a drug called enclomiphene, or it's the isomer. It has about a 10-hour half-life, and that works more on the LH receptor. And this is what I think is, is going on with guys, and I've seen this with a lot of my dudes, that initially they feel pretty good on Clomid, and then a couple of weeks in, they start feeling weird. And my, my um, suspicion is that they're building up the zooclomiphene, and they're getting extra, extra estrogenic. And so what's honestly weird too, when we're doing blood labs and stuff, it's so hard to kind of figure out what's going on here because I think we're kind of on the, the fringe of, of hormone replacement therapy. I mean, I've, I've been to many conferences. I've talked to a lot of different people. And at the end of the day, we still are practicing medicine. Um, you know, we, we like to think that it's as easy as estrogen, FSH, and that's kind of the game right? Like you release FSH and then your body releases estrogen, release LH, your body releases testosterone. But I, I don't believe it's that simple. What's funny is last week, I had a gentleman whose FSH was 12 and his LH was four. So the reference range for both of those is like two to eight ish. So that's a very high FSH. So if you'd have told me his FSH was 12 and his LH was four, I'd say, Hey, his testosterone's probably fair. And his, uh, estrogen's probably through the roof. It's not what I saw. I saw his total testosterone is natural one of the higher natural persons, I say it was over a thousand. And uh, his estrogen was in normal range, I believe it was 30, 35. So it's not so simple when we're playing with these things. Not only that, but when we're talking about Clomid being a selective estrogen receptor modulator, I think on these next slides, it talks about it acts different in different parts of the body. So something to consider if you're, you know, using this in the patient or you're using this again, not medical advice, I forgot to say it at the beginning, never medical advice, go talk to um, you, you know, your doctor or whatever, this is just information purposes only. I share this with my patients and I share this with, uh, some of my doctor friends. So, okay, here it is. I actually talk a little bit more about the mechanism of action. It says sucks binds to the estrogen receptors in the hypothalamus ovaries, endometrium, cervix, that's for women. Uh, and it produces estrogenic and anti-estrogenic effects. So how weird is that, that it actually can do both. Right. So it says here partial estrogen agonist in the hypothalamus and it has negative feedback in addition. Right. So it's basically telling the brain we don't have any we don't have any estrogen. And so because LH and FSH both come from gonadotropin releasing hormone, it increases gonadotropin releasing hormone and it increases testosterone and both estrogen. Now, what's also really strange here is it seems like. Clomid has an ability to read how much estrogen there is in the body, E2, 17 beta estradiol, that's E2. And it can kind of decide whether or not it wants to be an agonist or an antagonist. So basically, that means it's either creating a response or blocking a response, right? So like testosterone and agonist would, would create it to do testosterone-like things, and agonist would block it from doing testosterone things. So it's very interesting that um, it can do both things. Right. It just depends on what's kind of going on in the body. Right. Antagonistic when combined with higher. So in higher E2, it actually is antagonistic um, In lower. It's it increases, um, you know, it's going to increase. It's going to have a more estrogenic effect. So it's very interesting. Very interesting. Um, and let's see here. And then there's I just click, click this other article and it's kind of added that in that the ideal uh, serum would possess antagonist activity in the mammillary gland. And this is, you know, again, a I, uh, I don't remember for sure. You know, what's funny about most drugs is they're often made uh, for other purposes. Like Viagra was made for a heart disease, I believe. And, I, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure that these were for breast cancer. Um, 
I, I should know that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was breast cancer, right? Because what they're trying to do um, for breast cancer sensitive uh, estrogen, this breast cancer, they want to shut off those receptors, right? But then, but the problem with that is if you nuke some, like in the same way with prostate cancer, if you nuke a guy's testosterone, he's going to get nasty side effects. In the same way you nuke a girl's estrogen, you're going to get nasty side effects, right? We need estrogen for your cardiovascular health, for your skeletal, uh, your bone health, and your, your nervous system, blood lipids, uh, a bunch of stuff like that. Uh, so what is, what's the dose? So, um, it really depends. Like I said, I, I went as low when I was trying to work on this myself, I would do like 12 and a half milligrams a week, you know, and I went even lower in that where, you know, I have a lot of friends that take this, uh, as doctors and they might take it once a month and their, their total testosterone is still like eight, 900 with a free T over 15. Um, and in some guys you can go as high as 50 milligrams daily. So wide variety of range. So I, I don't know if that has to do with estrogen sensitivity, probably also something to consideration. Like I myself have MTHFR mutations, um, and also CMT mutations. Those are genetic SNPs that basically kind of dictate how fast or how slow my body can break down, uh, estrogen and other, uh, uh, neurotransmitters. Uh, so again, very individualized, uh, the, for those headaches, I saw the dose was hundred milligrams. So I, I assume, you know, overall, again, FDA approved drug. So, you know, probably pretty safe and women, they, they use it consistently to help with ovulations. They, they basically take it in the first half of their cycle. Uh, so right. Women's cycle, you have a uh, follicular phase in the beginning and luteal phase in the second half. And basically they're trying to stimulate that ability to ovulate, release an egg so they can be fertilized. So women take it in the, the I think five days after the fifth day of their cycle. Uh, so why do guys use it? So you can use it as monotherapy just to help increase testosterone. Now it's not going to work if your gonads don't work, right? Because what it's doing is increasing the signal, right? So if you've, you've, you know, you've had your gonads cut off, uh, it's not going to increase your testosterone because it's going, it's, it's going to tell your, your gonads to increase testosterone and your gonads aren't there. So, and also there can be other HPA axis dysfunction kind of going on that won't allow, uh, you know, get prolactin and a couple of other hormones that are going to be kind of flying around there that can, uh, limit Clomid's effect. Uh, but that's probably why most of you are here looking at its ability to increase testosterone also helps with fertility. Now, what's also interesting is that it does seem to keep the ejaculatory volume and the testicular size in guys when they're taking, uh, uh, testosterone sipinate or other form of exogenous testosterone that shuts down, right? So if you start taking exogenous testosterone, it shuts down LH, and then you uh, stop producing sperm and your testes will shrink, your atrophy. So what's interesting though, is I measure, I measure LH and FSH and a lot of my guys that are on TRT and um, their LH and FSH are shut off, but their, their gonad size comes back. So I'd be very interested if there's some other doctors out there, or some other, even some guys out there that have been using who I know now with ACG, there's kind of a, a the, the compounding pharmacies aren't allowed to use it anymore, which is a whole other conversation. They're not allowed to create it because it's a biologic and that's a whole other conversation that I should, I probably do a video on. Um, but it does, you know, it, from the mechanism of action, it doesn't make sense to me. You would think that if you are getting growth in your testes. And if you are increasing your ejaculatory volume, um, you think the LH and FSH would go up, but I have guys that are on TRT and maybe I need to go higher, higher dosage on them. Um, but I'd be interested in everyone else's feedback if they're using Clomid while they're on TRT. Um, and I'm actually just sent some guys for some, some, for some semen samples to see how Clomid does compare to ACG because ACG is pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious that if you're doing ACG while you're on cycle with testosterone, you're going to remain fertile. Um, I, I don't know if I, did I include it in this. No, I didn't. Uh, ACG, I believe that the one Baylor study, they're doing like 1500 to 3000. I use three times a week to, to blast fertility back. But I believe it's about, uh, what was the stat? 500 I use twice a week will keep a guy's uh, fertility above baseline. 250 I use twice a week is about 70 to 80% of, uh, around baseline. 
And, and Gannett around, I'm not as familiar with. It became more popular here recently because of the ACG ban. It needs to be dosed a couple times a day. I haven't really used it. But again, I'd be interested if some of you guys out there, if you've used it before, uh, let me know about your experience on it. So again, why are we getting, why are we getting these side effects? Um, if, if this is what, you know, what the research is telling us as far as estrogen working at different places and it's antagonistic here and agonistic here, I, I don't, I'm not really sure. Like I said, my biggest kind of what, what I think is going on here is that there's that buildup of that zooclomiphene and we're getting a more FSH and a more estrogenic effect. And, and I mean, I see it, you see the, you see the sexual hormone binding globulin go up. So I think that might have some type of play as far as maybe there's other binding globulins um, playing with thyroid and, um, you know, even with your free T, like your total T's up there, but all these, you have high amounts of estrogen. I mean, really, when you think about it, it's weird. You're telling your body it doesn't have any estrogen, but, and then in other places, you're telling your body it has lots of estrogen. So it's producing more estrogen. And then in certain places, it's not able to act. So it's kind of weird, really, at the end of the day. And I think that's why we see the wide variety of effects, because I'd say maybe 20 to 30% of guys that have used Clomid really don't feel that great on it. Um, that's why, actually, I've been moving over to straight in clomiphene citrate way better. I personally take it way better. Way, if I had to pick, like, I can't, I can't even really do Clomid more than uh, a couple weeks before I just, I don't feel good. I don't want to do anything. And I, I feel weird. So, but again, I think that's probably where, you know, and again, is this, we're telling the brain it has no estrogen. Is that what causes anxiety and depression and mood changes? Because estrogen is actually, um, we need estrogen. It's good for the libido. Uh, it, it, it does a lot of good things for the body. So if you're telling your body, it doesn't have any, you know, what, it, what is that going to do? But then again, in other places, it's telling your body it does have estrogen. So I think that's probably where at least the, you know, the insecurity and then I, I kind of already briefly talked about, you know, night sweats, chills, and flushing. I've heard that from a wide variety of people. I talked about that earlier. That may have to do with the buildup of estrogen. And if you have SNP mutations, you're going to have an inability to detox. You get more uh, norepinephrine. You get more serotonin. All these things that your body has, your body's kind of fighting to kind of break down. It messes with your thyroid. And then with your sexual binding globulin, can do a wide variety of things. Um, very rarely, you'll get a an increased growth in the pituitary and, uh, that will press down on your, uh, I believe the optic chiasm. And so that can impair and give you a little bit of blurry vision to my understanding. Most people that have that, I've never had it happen with any of my patients. Uh, if they do, you just, you, they are supposed to stop them immediately. Um, and it should go away. But what I, I have heard, it can be permanent. If you get blurry vision and you're on it and say, it's like you stay on it for another six to 12 months, you can get permanent growth in the hypothalamus and, maybe a little bit of blurred vision. So um, other things that we can expect from high amounts of estrogen, you can get headaches, nausea, bloating, a little bit of water retention, and uh, gyno and nipple pain. So that's kind of, you know, I, I put my references here. Again, I kind of talked about, you know, supporting the channel, but that's kind of my breakdown. I'm still, I've been moving mostly over to inclomiphene citrate. I know plenty of guys that use Clomid, they feel great on it. Again, I was super excited when I heard about this because mechanism action wise, I feel like it's way more quote unquote natural than using exogenous testosterone. Oh, one thing I didn't talk about is that, you know, like if you're taking exogenous testosterone and you stop, you got to, you got to let your limits, you got to let your limit, your levels plummet. And then you got to re kickstart it. We're on Clomid. I've seen guys that haven't taken it for months and their levels are still quite a bit higher than baseline. So a other kind of little fact on there. So uh, I hope this is, uh, overall was helpful for you guys. If you've used this before, please, you know, feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what your experience has been with this and ACG and maybe some other stuff, but again, not medical advice, but uh, I appreciate everyone stopping by here, uh, until next time, stay vigilant, my friends and God bless.